Well, it's Christmas time and I don't really have anyone to spend the holidays with, so let's watch a video together. This video is by Richard Wolf. You may have heard the name. He's working for the Gravel Institute now. He argues that wage labor is theft and that the profit a company makes is stealing from their workers. So, I'm the only one that can save Christmas from idiosity. So, let's take a look. Right now, as you're listening to this, you are being robbed. Inflation? Taxation? A chunk of everything your hard work creates is being stolen from you. And it's a system called capitalism that's robbing you. No, it's called statism. Wrongism, Wolf. Every day when you check in to work for your boss, you are being taken advantage of and stolen from. Ha, huh, that explains why my soda went missing. You are being deprived of the full value of what you contribute. Oh, you're talking about labor theory and surplus value. If this hadn't been done to death already. Let me break it down. A capitalist isn't someone in a top hat burning library books to run a misery factory. Anyone who puts forward capital, money, to set workers in motion becomes thereby a capitalist. So the majority of small businesses, and what of the self-employed? Are they not capitalist? They own the means of production? Isn't that the definition we keep hearing? That is to say, they're acting as a capitalist. And what's their goal? People will tell you it's innovation or competition, but down the real world, it's pretty simple. Capitalists have one goal, and that goal is to turn a profit. This is new to us? I think you underestimate the average person's intelligence. Even then, what's wrong with turning a profit? Even a first grader can understand that concept. Say, Wolf, if I start a firm making fidgets and I am the only one on board, is that capitalist? If I hire someone, does that then make it capitalist? Even then, how am I stealing their full labor? Do I not contribute to the firm? I should give 90% to them and 10% to myself? That seems unfair. You make it out to be the opposite, yet, do you understand the trade-off? If I didn't hire them, they'd be without a job, and making nothing. If they didn't join my firm, I'd be out as well. You're seeing the relationship as exclusionary, while it's inclusionary. When you write a book, is your goal not to make money? You'd like to think so. But would you like getting nothing for your labor? I see a lot of hypocrisy here. Pursuing profits to accumulate money is just how capitalism works. That's the nature of the beast. So capitalism is a beast by trading products to make a profit while benefiting its customers. Right. It's the single impulse of capitalism. That doesn't make capitalists personally greedy, though some might be. Greed is a series of trade-offs. It's a series of unlimited desires. Wolf, if I said to you, if you're happy with your position, you'd say yes. Yet deep down, you're always looking for something more. It's human nature. Yet how do we channel that greed into a constructive force? The only system so far that has a consistent way of doing that constructively is free markets and voluntary charity. Everything else, like welfare, corporatism, collectivism, and socialism, has only led down the road to serfdom. We're not even talking about good or evil here. Capitalists need to maximize profit to the exclusion of all other considerations, or they'll get eaten up by capitalists who are smarter or more ruthless than them. What about customer opinion? If I make an awful computer, is it not logical that the customer will reject it? Other firms will look at my mistake and capitalize on it by correcting it. Will people not benefit from a better product? That's the jungle law of the market. Jungle law, dog eat dog, give me a break. If any society operated by that principle, it would have quickly gone the way of the dodo. People don't act like that every day. You engage in voluntary contracts. If the state disappeared tomorrow, it's unlikely that would change. 
Humans are a cooperative species in the sense of the word. If I see something I want, I don't automatically go to robbing someone. I'll engage in the market to obtain it. What law you're distributing applies more to government than it does capitalism. What the law you're describing applies more to government than it does capitalism. So capitalists need profit to survive. But where does this profit come from? And that's where you come in. Literally, profit comes from you. No, it's a simple equation. Revenue minus expenses equals profits. If I spend 200 bucks on a laser engraver and engrave people's phones for $15 a pop, I engrave 30 phones. I will make a profit of $250. If my expenses include a worker, that will factor into the expenses. Profit does not directly come from a worker. The self-employed would know this in small part. Workers help with profit. But the sales of the product minus expenses determines the overall profit. Here's a little thought experiment. Meet Harold. Harold has a chain of buildings full of kitchens full of ingredients. But Harold doesn't know how to make a burger himself. He doesn't know how to make a burger? Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, Five Guys? These don't exist? You realize most restaurants start with a person that cooks. Food trucks and the like don't exist according to your logic. Also, I asked the question, why wouldn't Harold just buy someone out? If he doesn't know how to cook, it would make sense to buy a stake in someone else's firm. Harold would need to invest a lot of time and money to start from scratch. If I didn't know the first thing about growing hemp, I probably wouldn't start a hemp firm. I want to buy one out. How does Harold get someone to make enough burgers that he can sell them and turn a profit? It's not a trick question. He pays you because you know how to make really good burgers. The money he uses to pay you is what we call capital. No, that's a generalization of the term. That's called working capital. It's your current assets minus current liabilities. That then is your working capital. That's money used to set production into motion. Let's say Harold spent $1,000 buying all the ingredients in the restaurant. And after you worked for a few weeks there, turning the ingredients into burgers, they brought in $3,000. Not bad. You added $2,000 worth of value to the ingredients. What about administration? You're telling me the owner doesn't arrange anything that then contributes to the revenue? But wait, you don't get all the money because Harold now has $3,000 on his hands. 1,000 of that is just making up for the cost of the ingredients. And if you were paid for the full value of your labor, you'd be making 2,000. But then Harold would only be breaking even on the burgers and he needs to make a profit in order to survive. So Harold does not pay you for the full value of your labor. You're trying to establish an objective value here. The problem is value is subjective. If the worker values his work for a price the employer is willing to pay, that would be subjective. Vice versa, if the employer values the labor more than the amount proposed, that indeed would be subjective. Maybe he pays you just a thousand of the value you produce. Maybe he pays you fifteen hundred. No matter what, you've been stolen from. Stolen. It's such a loaded word. With it, you can convince anyone of anything. You're still benefiting from the exchange. Theft does not benefit the victim in any amount. An employee agrees to exchange his or her labor for a wage. That is a mutual contract. They may not earn 50-50, yet they're left in a better position than before. You spent more of your labor than you were compensated for. But here's the dirty truth. The story doesn't end with you and Harold. This process plays out across your city or town, your state, the country, the entire world. The rich get richer and the little guy barely gets by. Barely getting by? America has some of the highest living standards in the world. Higher than Eastern Europe and in some aspects higher than the middle class in Western Europe. I would not call that hardly getting by. We call the process, a boss is stealing from you, exploitation. 
We don't mean that in an emotional sense about how we feel about it, but something that's actually a documented economic phenomenon. Yes, by the Marxist classical liberals in neoclassical schools, all debunked by modern schools of economics, including the Austrian school and the Keynesian school. The gap between how much the worker produces and how much they get paid. Exploitation is a universal feature of capitalist economies, and it never ends. The system requires more and more exploitation, paying workers less, making them work more, or making them more productive without increasing their wages. When you see in the newspaper that a corporation's recording record profits, that is what they are doing. Your hard work is producing more value, but you're not getting enough compensation in return. There are tens of thousands of Harolds out there, but billions of people just like you. You and Harold are two different types of people. You belong to two different classes. Yes, use that class division to foster animosity. Yes, divide people based on wealth. That will go real well. There's a capitalist who owns the means to produce goods and services, and there's the workers who only have their own labor to survive on. The capitalists appropriate the value that the workers' labor creates and keep it for themselves. And you are not immune from it. At any job you work at, the condition of your employment is that you produce more by your labor than you get paid. So in the capitalist system, no one is paid what they're worth. All profit is value extraction, and that means that all profit is theft from you. Well, guys, I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe, Merry Christmas, and stay free.